Hi, this is Russ Walden with Father's Heart Ministry. Welcome to lesson number 37 of the Back to Basics course. We're going to go to Romans chapter 12, verses 6 and 8, and study today and next week what is referred to as the motivational gifts. These gifts differ from the leadership gifts, the fivefold ministry that we spoke of uh, in earlier lessons. They're different from the nine gifts of the Spirit or the dancing hand of God that comes down on us from time to time. These gifts, the motivational gifts is what we refer to them as, are God's template, the template of God's character that is embedded into every believer. This motive gift that you have, and everyone has one emphasized in their life, it's a drive in your personality. It's a spiritual personality type. It's something that molds you into your place and suits you and fits you for your place of usefulness in the body of Christ. It makes you uh, uh, that one that will be a living member of the body of Christ, not just a spectator in an audience. Now... The motivational gifts, we don't hear much about them, but they are important because God does not want you to do some cold service for Him. He wants you to be driven to work. He wants you to be passionate. Passion for the work of God. Passion for your place in the body of Christ. You know, we see some that seem like they're baptized in lemon juice and don't have a lot of zeal or fulfillment in their work for God. But then there are others who have great zeal for God's purpose. They passionately embrace what they perceive to be their place in the economy of God. Why, why is that? Does this make them more spiritual? No. It's just simply those who have an innate recognition of that which motivates them in their relationship with God and their relationship with others in the body of Christ. Whether they understand the motivational gifts or not, they have yet been activated in this area. And they found their niche. They found their place. They're excited. They're encouraged in their work for Jesus. And again, every believer, in, including you, you are endowed with one of the seven motivational gifts. Now, what are, what are they? The motivational gifts are prophecy, different from the being a prophet, serving, teaching, exhortation, giving, ruling, and the motivational gift of mercy. Now, God has a work for you, and he's put one of these gifts, one of these templates he has fitted your personality with to drive you to a particular function in the body of Christ where you are best suited to serve the family of God. A further purpose of the motivational gift is for you to discover who you are in the body of Christ. Jesus doesn't want you to look like everyone else. He, there are no cookie cutter Christians. Uh, he wants you to be you and he's molded and fashioned you to that particular use that he's destined you for from before the foundation of the world. You might be a hand in the body of Christ, but he doesn't want you to imitate a foot. You might be a foot, but he doesn't want you to imitate the ear, using the metaphor of God's family being a body. As you discover your motivational gift, you're going to discover who you are in the body of Christ. And uh, soon thereafter, you're going to be doing the things that God has called you for, not because you have to as a sense of duty, but you want to as a drive of your personality connected with the template of, of God's character for you that we refer to as the motivational gift. Now again, the motivational gift or the motive gift that God has given to you, and there's always going to be one that is more dominant, it's a supernatural drive implanted on the inside of you to do service for the Lord. It's often been said that the motive gifts, and there are seven of them that we just mentioned, the motive gifts combined make up the personality of God in the church. You will see yourself often in all of the gifts because Jesus lives in you and the gifts are a part of him. Yet there is going to be one particular motive gift of the seven we just mentioned out of Romans 12, 6 through 8 
that's going to fit your personality. And we're going to cover and describe for you each gift. You're going to see one particular gift that has traits that fit you best. As we read the description of each gift, one of them is going to suit you best. And it has strengths and liabilities. But nonetheless, you're going to locate yourself spiritually in the body of Christ. You're also going to recognize the gift of others without putting pressure on everyone to think like you think because they don't have your gift. Understanding one another in the context of differing gifts, particularly these motivational personality templates that God places upon us, it's going to en enable you to have more harmony with people that don't think like you or feel like you. Uh, you'll have more harmony with the whole body of Christ rather than getting caught up in misunderstanding and offense because they're not more like you or don't see things your way. They're not supposed to. Neither are you supposed to see things their way either. Now, the, one of the motivational gifts that we mentioned was the motivational gift of prophecy. This is different from the office of a prophet. It's different from the gift of prophecy in the fivefold ministry. But it is the one gift that is manifested in all three areas of giftings. The office gifts, the charismatic gifts, nine gifts of the Spirit, and the motive gifts. The first motive gift lift, listed in Romans 12, 6, and 8 is the gift of prophecy. Even if you've never prophesied in a public meeting, you could still have this motive gift of prophecy. Also, uh, just because you have the motive gift of prophecy does not qualify you again to become a prophet. We're not talking about ministry gifts or office gifts, but we're talking about a personality template. I am called to the office of a prophet, but I have a mercy motivation. See, these are, these are uh, not office or ministry offices, but rather they're the sincere motives and the core of your being. And it's more important than your function in the body of Christ is the motive behind it. The motive gifts are God's grace dealing with your motives and your drives. Your gifting and your work and your finding your place in the family of God must flow out of this genuine response to fulfilling your personal destiny in God and the Father has instilled a component of himself as a personality template to give you a mantle, a formative mantle of ministry to prepare you and to equip you for your, for your place. The person who has the motive gift of prophecy tends to be able to discern people's characters and motives. He, the prophetic person is a... Uh, tends to be introspective. He tends to be a self-examiner. He looks deep within his own intentions. Uh, someone with a motivational gift of prophecy tends to be too hard on himself. Uh, he's quick many times to uh, judge himself in his own life and and if he doesn't learn to operate in, in the, the mercy of God, he'll tend to be too hard on others. He's quick to, to cut himself rather than to bring forgiveness and grace to himself. And sometimes he's quick whenever he's immature. He's quick to identify sin and, be, and point the finger. But always remember, Jesus is not about pointing the finger. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we don't go and present the opportunity for repentance. But a true prophet, his, his idea about repentance is going to be, it's the goodness of God that leads men to repent. So after all the introspection and the meditation of, of how God doesn't want us to fall short of the goodness that he has planned for us, a person with the motive gift of prophecy is going to be uh, provoked to, to speak forth, provoked to bring forth a message uh, that is burning on the inside of him. They tend to speak up. They tend to draw attention to themselves in a room. Sometimes they get accused of grandstanding, but it's just their gift. It's their personality type. Uh, they tend to speak with an innate authority. They don't apologize for what they have to say, and it makes them appear roughshod at times. Uh, they have great sincerity. Uh, they're not one that talk out of both sides of their mouth. Uh, they strive to see things and to see people as God sees them. They're, they have a seriousness to their uh, personality that tends to make others think they don't have a sense of humor, but in fact they do. Um, 
a person with the motive gift of prophecy uh, affects those around him even though he's loving and, and encouraging, but yet people tend to get a little nervous around him because they don't know what he's going to say next. Uh, a person with the motive gift of prophecy desires to see evidence of change in people's life. It's not a joke just to talk about it. He's going to provoke you to actually do something. If you're motivated by this gift, you want to see someone have the fruit of God manifested in their character, manifested in their everyday life. A prophecy-motivated individual doesn't want to see people fall short of the destiny that he has for them. And sometimes he can be just a little pushy. And because a prophet can have more faith for someone than they have for themselves. And uh, so they can, they can seem at times to be harsh, callous, or intolerant. Uh, particularly if they're immature and don't understand the nature of how God has shaped them. Uh, the person with this gifting can be uh, so burdened by uh, the passion within him and his need to get it out. That he, that he tends to uh, break protocol. He tends to not be, uh, he tends to be politically incorrect at times. Uh, he can be opinionated if he hasn't learned how not to have an opinion and how just to say what the Father says. So we have to let someone with a prophetic motivation, we have to allow them to be immature, uh, but at the same time understand they have a unique ability to look at the body as a whole. They tend to have this x-ray vision thing going on and when they look at groups and they look at the broader purpose of God in a group, they'll see things that others don't see. That doesn't mean they're being critical. That means God is wanting them to see so that they can speak and bring encouragement for change and transformation in a group or in an individual. They tend to be bold and uh, they tend to be loners. They don't often have really close friendships. That doesn't mean they're insular or pride, proudful or think they're better than anybody else. Uh, they are tend to... Uh, they do tend to meteoric shifts in demeanor and intensity. Sometimes they're very quiet, other times they're loud and boisterous. Uh, sometimes you may feel like the person with this gift, you don't really know where you stand with them. This gift uh, is symbolized by the pointed finger because they're going to get your attention. They're going to be driven. Uh, if you're someone who uh, just cannot stand to to see the less than God's best for someone, and you want to speak to it sometimes with uh, not necessarily the greatest kindness or tact, then you could be someone who has this motive gift of prophecy. Maybe you know someone like that, and you're, you could look across the room and say, yes, this is, I'm married to that person, uh, but you're not like that at all. Well, you have to learn how to appreciate them. We need those people in the body of Christ. Now, the complement to the gift of prophecy is the motivational gift that Romans 12, 6 through 8 says, is the gift of mercy. These are two extremes. God is in both. Uh, God hates sin and compromise. He requires repentance and change, but uh, he also moves in great mercy toward those who are in failure. Uh, he, God moves to love people to their turning points. And he uses a motivational gift of mercy. He will put a template of his mercy in someone's life. And if you have a template of, of the mercy of God, the motive gift of mercy, you could be accused of being a uh, compromiser, of, uh, of being too soft, being too easy on people. But that's not it at all. Uh, that's just not your place. Others can be hardcore and mean, spirited. Uh, but yet maybe that's just an immaturity on their part, but they're still motivated to see change. Mercy people, uh, people with the motivational gift of mercy are very sensitive individuals. Uh, they can walk into a room and read the atmosphere like a newspaper headline and they're quick to find the person who's hurting. Uh, they're, they're real touchy-feely. They, they, they are quick to pick up when someone is depressed even when that person's going to say, none of your business, get away from me. They know when someone is depressed, hurt, dejected, rejected, or, does, or they may know when they're joyous and happy, even if they're not smiling. The mercy motivation person is very sensitive to others' moods, even when those moods are masked. Mercy motivated people are drawn to those that are hurting. They are drawn to the underdog, and because of that, if you're a mercy-motivated person, you may be quick to pick up on offenses. 
And you need to guard yourself against that, just like the prophetic person needs not to be too harsh or difficult. A mercy-motivated person is attracted to the hurting. They take on the feelings of the hurting as if it were themselves. Though so they have to be careful to exercise their gift cheerfully. They have to be careful not to pick up offenses of hurting people. Uh, their job is not to solve the problem, but to comfort others in their pain. Uh, if they're not careful, they'll take on offenses and they're prone to bitterness. And you need to guard against that if that's who you are. Mercy-motivated people desire to bring healing to those that are hurting. And they can feel that so strongly that they tend to try and drive a group, a meeting, or a church in that direction when maybe that isn't the emphasis at the time. Uh, they want to heal those who are hurting. They're, they're prone to displays of tenderness, compassion, and understanding and forgiveness. But that can be misread by someone with the gift of prophecy who says, says you're a compromiser, who says you're trying, you're, you invade people's space, you're being too easy on people. And so those two gifts, the, the template of prophecy on someone's character or uh, mercy, those two gifts need to understand one another and respect one another. Now, what about the motivational gift of serving? It is a very unnatural thing for a man to want to serve. It's in our nature to desire to be served. We are naturally proud. We, we tend to think that we deserve service. Uh, and, uh, but yet service is a godly quality. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. He said, he that would be mega among you, he that would be greatest, let him be servant of all. The manifestation, in the manifestation of the motive gift of serving, we see Jesus, the humble servant. And it is that aspect of his personality. And sometimes we think a service-motivated person just wants to be seen. He's trying to be hyper-spiritual. No, this is someone who's just genuinely motivated to help others. A person motivated with this gift is usually very down-to-earth and practical. Someone uh, with the motivational gift of serving uh, doesn't have their head in the clouds. They are so practical that others misjudge them as being unspiritual, and then they will also judge others, saying, well, you're just being hyper-spiritual, but we need to go cut the church grass. Uh, the individual with the gift of serving is very observant. Uh, he sees the serving gift, the serving template uh, on your personality causes you to see immediate needs. And if you can meet them, you'll meet them right away, uh, but yet you need to work in with what's going on at the time, not to interrupt the flow of what God may be doing. Uh, someone who has the motivational gift of serving knows if the church is clean or the chairs are straight or there's toilet paper in the bathroom. He notices if people wear the same clothes over and over again. Uh, some people think someone with a serving motivation is nosy uh, because they tend to butt into people's business, not because they want to gossip. They just want to know how they can help. They're driven to meet practical needs. They look for the needs of others and they're concerned about the comfort of others. This is the difference between a Mary and a Martha. Martha had the motivational gift of serving. And it has its place, but all of these giftedness ha gifts have to be balanced out between one another. So these are the first three motive gifts. And understand again that the motivational gifts, uh, whether uh, you know you have one or not, one of these gifts is going to be specific and emphatic in your life. Whether it's prophecy, serving, or mercy, we're going to cover, cover the others in the next week, you have a gifting. You need to understand your gifting and you need to understand the gifting of others so that you don't misunderstand and get into an unnecessary personality conflict with others in the body of Christ. The one who is prophetic and tends to be a little hard charging needs to respect the one who has the gift of mercy. The one who has the gift of mercy doesn't need to pick up the offenses of those that are hurting and reject the austere uh, attitude and personality of the prophetic person. And likewise, the person with the motivational gift of serving needs to have it in their heart to respect others who don't seem to be motivated to cut the grass, straighten the chairs up at church, come early and help, get out the snacks. Uh, those are not minor things. Those are absolutely important things. But all of these gifts 
need to respect one another and operate in harmony with one another. If we can get this thinking into the body of Christ as much as we do the fivefold ministry and the nine gifts of the Spirit, there'd be much more harmony because you'd understand that person that gets under your skin just doesn't have your gift. And then we also have these gradients of maturity. And where there's a lack of maturity, the gifts tend to butt heads with one another. And, and so we need to mature in our gift and allow others the opportunity to mature in their gift. What about it? Are you someone who has, do you think you have the motive gift of prophecy? Are you a hard-charging, positive, encouraging person that just wants to see people fulfill their destiny? Or are you one with the gift of serving and you come in and you want to straighten the pillows and you want to help people and maybe be of practical assistance uh, to the exclusion sometimes of other things that are just as important? Or do you have the gift of mercy? Are you easily hurt with the things that hurt the others? And are you prone to pick up the offenses of others, and you need to guard against that while at the same time asserting your gift, because through your gift flows the template of God's personality of mercy and love and concern for others. So Father, we ask that you, you identify this gift, this, your template, the template of your personality on the life of those that are watching and viewing, and, and we'll continue this next week. Uh, with the remaining four motive gifts. And again, look it up. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. Talk about these gifts. And let's see that your gift is identified, appreciated, and emplaced in the uh, relationships, and the church groups, and the family, your little circle in the kingdom of God, where God has placed you. God bless you.